Hello everybody. So today I was going to talk about spider mites. Some of my collection happened to get some of these coming out of dormancy. A lot of the time as these plants wake up, so do the spider mites. And because of the new growth, they'll kind of take advantage of the plant. Now it might be difficult to see, you might not even be able to see them. But there are some super small orangish dots. I'll put some pictures up of what they look like. Just because the camera really doesn't show them off well they're just so small but you can see them with the naked eye if you look very um closely and you know what you're looking for so i'm just going to discuss you know how to identify spider mites um signs of them and how to treat them just because you know it's a perfect time i'm dealing with them so might as well show other people how to so here's one of my plants that has already gotten hit pretty badly from the spider mites you can see this pedial right here has started going a brownish almost like dry edges and that will slowly go towards the middle and then the leaf will die now naturally the plant would blacken towards the end and move inwards but because of spider mites it goes brown and you can see this very obvious almost cell damage from them drinking the nutrients out of the leaf and then you can also see this on this trap right here similarly the dryish brown moving towards the middle and now to be 100% certain that it isn't some other weird growth habit from your plant, you can actually look around the damage for the spider mites. So you can see there, those little orange specks. Those are either eggs or spider mites. And they're the most obvious sign. Now something that I do see a lot of people mistake is spider mites versus predatory mites. Now predatory mites are good mites, they will actually eat spider mites and they do tend to live alongside your plants if you have them outside. Um, so I'll put some videos up or pictures of predatory mites versus spider mites. Predatory mites are a lot larger, they are generally like about 2 millimeters, 1 to 2 millimeters. Um, and they move much, much faster. Whenever you observe spider mites, after a very long time, you might see them move a tiny bit, but they are very, very slow and they'll spend most of their time just sitting still drinking from the leaf. While predatory mites will actually move around and hunt the spider mites. So if you do have predatory mites, um, they're a very good thing to have and keep them around. Do not treat predatory mites, you wanna treat the spider mites. All right, so you've managed to identify that you do have spider mites and they are starting to grow with eggs and damage your plants. So now what do you do? There's two main options you can go. There's either the pesticide route or the predatory mite route. Now, number one is the route that I use the pesticides. And there are two brands that I particularly like. There's Avid Miticide and BioAdvanced 3-in-1. Both of these do work, however, I tend to notice more success with the avid miticide. It is a contact pesticide, which means on contact it will kill the mites. So you do need to be a bit better with spraying. You need to spray on the other undersides of the leaves and that sort of thing. While with the bioadvanced, it is systemic. So you just spray the plants all over. And as the new growth comes up, the new growth will be sort of poisoned to the mites. So if the mites drink from the new growth, then they will generally die. Um, the BioAdvance doesn't work all the time for me. I do use the BioAdvance just to prevent spider mites from appearing, but clearly it did not work um, for these plants as spider mites are still here and living. So I'll use the Avid Miticide to just go ahead and knock them out. So the second option you can use is predatory mites. Now, these predatory mites will kind of hunt down the spider mites in your collection. You can buy like a thousand of these online. A species that I've seen a lot of people have success with is Californicus. So you can buy those, release them into your collection, and they will go around and hunt the spider mites. And this can give your collection immunity against them, so you won't have to worry about them. But for this demonstration, I'm going to be using pesticides, just because I've used that in the past and they've worked. And for pesticides, you're going to want to wait for the sun to go down, and so I'll see you then. All right, and making the avid miticide is very easy. So I actually lost my label on this, but I just put down the ratio. It's 0.15 milliliters per two cups. So you're just gonna get two cups of distilled water. It doesn't need to be distilled, but just purified water. You're gonna put that into your mixing cup. Make sure you do not use a cup that is used for foods 
as your mixing cup because obviously pesticides and foods do not go well together. And then this is the little capsule that Flytrap Store sells theirs from. So they sell like $20 for like this little capsule, which is usually enough for most people. I'm just gonna grab 0.15 milliliters. Just gonna measure that out. And then you're gonna put this 0.15 milliliters of the avid miticide into your water. Make sure you get all of it out. Then you're gonna mix it. And you're gonna put that into your sprayer. And that's all you do. So I usually make small amounts of this at a time just because you don't wanna really make a ton of it. Um, it's easier to store in this little concentrate. And then this is all you need and you're just gonna spray this out on your plants. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken out all of my plants and the sun has gone down so you can see there's no more direct light on them. If you spray your pesticides into the direct light, it can kind of reduce the effectiveness. It can break down the pesticide and you want this to be, you know, as successful as possible. So I'd wait for either after the sun goes down or do this before the sun goes up just that it increases the effectiveness. And then all you're going to do is I would start off with just a full misting. Something like this over as much of the surface as possible. Now you also want this to be as little wind as possible so that the pesticide does not fly away all into your local environment um, because that can be harmful to your ecosystem. And then after you spray the surface, I would just do some from the side, something like this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help get under the traps better. If you look at it from the side, you'll be spraying kind of the underside of the pediole and trap, and that's where they like to hide. So make sure you always do a top coat and from the side. And after you do that, you should be good to go. So for avid miticide, because it is a contact-based pesticide, it'll only affect the adults. Um, it'll basically disable the adults so that they cannot move or eat or reproduce. And because of that, the eggs will be unaffected. So you will need to spray three times, you'll spray once, wait three days, spray again, wait three days, and spray again. So this will take nine days in total. And after that third cycle, all of your spider mites should be dead. And that's pretty much it for Avid. And so that's all you do. I'll just repeat this for the given time frame, and I'll show you the aftermath. All right, so it's been about four days since I last treated with avid miticide. And whenever I look at these, I see almost no mites. So there are still a couple, which I will need to clean up with probably one more application of the miticide. But for the most part, they are completely wiped out on these plants. Um, so you can see, uh, let's find one of these where they were affected. Here's CK Rottweiler. So you can see that trap is still affected, but there are no mites on that or in the trap or anywhere on it. Um, so one thing to keep in mind with uh, avid miticide is since it's contact based and it basically disables the mites, it will take some time to kill them. Uh, so after the application, I waited four days and in, in that period, there was like a pretty heavy rain. Um, so what that did is the avid miticide killed them and then that rain would wipe off all those bodies. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, you might look after the application and there's still mites, but those could actually be just dead corpses. Um, so I'd try to wait until after like rain or some kind of thing, or you could even try to spray them off with a mister and see if they reappear after spraying. Um, but yeah, so I do still have some eggs around that I've seen. So I will probably apply one or two more times just to make sure that they're all completely wiped out and I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the season. But yeah, that's how I deal with spider mites. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, you can accept, expect, sorry, a collection tour coming soon, but here's just a little overview of teas. Um, they're all doing really nice this spring so far. So yeah, I'll see you next with that collection video. Thank you for watching.